Today, I would like to teach you how to divide polynomial functions by illustration of the following exercise. So we're going to take x squared plus 5x minus 1, and we're going to divide it by the x minus 1. All right. So the first thing is, I don't really like this form. All right. We're going to do this in long division form. Uh, so take a look. Bam. So whatever term is basically on the right-hand side of your division symbol will be then on the outside now of your long division symbol. Okay, and then whatever on the right hand, excuse me, left, oh, that would help if I know my left from my right. On the left hand side of that division symbol, uh, that will then go on the inside, okay, of your long division symbol. All right, also keep in mind that this is the denominator, right, and the denominator will always go on the outside, okay? All right, so now, how do we do this? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the highest power of your variable in the uh, divisor. Okay, so the highest power of the variable here is x to the first power. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to see how many times does this highest power of x in the divisor divide into the highest power of x in your dividend. Okay, so in other words, the question I have for myself is I'm going to take x squared, which is the highest power in the dividend, and then divide into it the highest power of x here in your divisor. So what is x squared divided by x? Obviously, that's just simply equal to then x, okay? Whatever this is equal to now will go on the top, all right, of your long division symbol. So write an x here. Next step that we're going to do is now I want you to write a negative symbol or, or a minus sign and put your parentheses in, okay? Now what we have to do is we have to now think what's x times x? That's going to be x squared, okay? So that goes here. Then what is x times negative 1? That will be a negative 1x. And that's it, right? I mean, there's no other term in this uh, divisor. So you can just plug in if you want. You can leave this area blank, or you can just, to help yourself out, you can just write a little zero there, okay? Now, what we're going to do before we actually now do our subtraction is first I want to take this negative sign, and I'm going to distribute it. So this negative sign has to be distributed, and it will become a negative x squared. Then I'm going to take the negative and we distribute it to the negative 1x. So remember, this is going to make a positive. Okay, right? Two negatives make a positive. And then when I take this negative symbol and I distribute it to the positive 0, right? I mean, that doesn't really matter. It's going to become negative 0. So anyway, let's do that distribution, okay? So get rid of this and change your signs. So this is a negative. This is a positive and then this will be a negative, okay? Now, actually now do the subtraction, okay? Or the addition, whatever it tells you to do. So the x squared minus x squared is just zero, right? So you can write your zero in there or you can just leave it blank. I'm gonna leave it blank. Positive five x plus one x is gonna be a positive then six x. Okay, I'm just gonna leave the positive sign out for now. And then obviously negative one minus zero is just negative one. Cool, that takes care of that part. The next step then is to again take your uh, divisor, look at the highest power again, and then figure out how many times does this higher po highest power of x go into your new dividend, okay? In other words, we're gonna now take the six x and divide it by x. So what does this division work out to be? You know the x is just cancel and you're left with six, right? What kind of a six, negative or positive? It's gonna be positive, right? So that's why it's going to be plus now six on the top, okay? Cool. Now we're going to do the same process. Once you have your number up there, set up your parentheses. Negative sign out there, and then your parentheses. So you're going to take your 6, multiply it by the x. That's a positive 6x. And then your 6 times the negative 1, and that's going to work out to be negative 6. Now before you do any addition and multiplication, you know, any addition or subtraction, make sure you distribute this negative symbol okay, to both terms. Notice you're going to have a double negative there. Okay, So it basically becomes negative 6x now negative six, and then positive six x. Now do your work. The negative, the positive six x minus the six x is zero, and then the negative one plus six will work out to be positive five, okay? And now you're done. There's no other terms out here, okay? There's no other terms. So this works out to now be the remainder or a part of the remainder, okay? Now remember, you might not remember from a long time, right? There's probably a long time ago since you did long division. Um, but what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take this remaining value 
it's a positive, so it's going to be plus 5. But you can't, you cannot write plus 5 here. It's going to be a fraction. You've got to write plus 5 over the x minus 1 because you still have to figure out how many times is this x minus 1, not figure out, but you, you're still, you have 5 left over. So you have to remember, we would divided x minus 1 into basically everything, okay? So that's why I have to carry that on over. Now that turns out to be, ladies and gentlemen, the final, final then answer, all right, of this. This is now what's known as the quotient, okay? That's the quotient. So that's the answer, all right? Now what you can do, now I know this looks like, oh my God, what a, what kind of a mess is this, right? It's like X's and Y, well, no Y's, but there's letters all over the place. We don't like that, we like numbers. So why don't you check yourself to see if it's right, okay? What I can do is I'm gonna take this and just convert it into a simple fraction. It's X squared plus five X minus one. And that's all divided by, right, the X minus one. Now just assume x is going to be equal to 2. Make up any number you want. Try not to choose 1 or 0 because sometimes that it, 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 it should work. It will work, but it, I just never like to choose 1 or 0 because in certain problems when I guess a number, certain times 0 and 1 won't uh, work out. I'm not suggesting that is the case here in these polynomial division problems, but just in general, I don't like to choose 0 or 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my 2 everywhere I see x, right? So I'm just plugging in a 2 all then divided by now x minus 1, so which was 2 minus 1. So what does this work out to be? Well, 2 squared is going to be a 4, right? 5 times 2 is 10, minus 1, all over, then 2 minus 1 is 1, okay? So what does this work out to be? This is going to be 4 plus 10 minus 1. That sounds like 13 to me, yes? 13, okay. Now what you did was you plugged in x, right? You plugged in x for this term and this term. Okay. In other words, you plugged in x for this, and you plugged in x for this. And you realize that the answer should be 13. Now this is the answer okay, to the division problem. So guess what you're now going to do? Take x, take 2, excuse me, and plug it in now for this. So you're going to do 2 plus then 6 plus then 5 over 2 minus 1. So 2 plus 6 plus then 5. 5 divided by 2 minus 1 is just simply 5 over 1, right? And that's going to simply just be 5. And 2 plus 6 is 8, and 8 plus 5 is omg 13. It works. It works. Isn't that beautiful? It works. That's how you can go back and check yourself. Just choose a number for x, plug it in. You better find that when you do this division, whatever number it works out to be, better equal this quotient. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in, okay? I really do appreciate it. If this video helped you out at all, if you don't mind helping us out, liking and subscribing and maybe even telling your friends, we'd so appreciate it. We appreciate all your support that you've been showing us. And I look forward to helping you with more problems. Check out our channel because we have thousands of videos, not only in math, but physics and chemistry as well. We've got a lot more coming. Take care.